I found uh, humor was my way of keeping the bullies at bay. And I figured that out really fast. I was born in 1955. I had such an amazing childhood. When I was 12 years old, um, I sat with my mom and I told her that I thought um, that I was queer or, or, or whatever word I used because I was noticing the boys at school. She said, if this is the way you know, you're going to live your life, I, I think you'd be subject to ridicule. I could not bear people laughing at you. And so I think you should live your life very quietly. I mean, who did she have to compare what a gay person was back then? You had maybe Liberace, who never even came out as gay, but flamboyant. You had Charles Nelson Riley, I think, back then. You had Paul Lynn on the center square of the Hollywood squares. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, we had one gay bar. I was 15 years old when I walked in the door, and everybody gay was in there, you know, in our town. It didn't matter if you were a high school student, if you were black, if you were white. We had our one lesbian, Sue. It was the year after the summer of love in San Francisco. I wanted to be a hippie. But I also was really, really, really beginning to realize how being gay could be a problem. Mid 80s, I got to Hollywood. The AIDS epidemic had hit with full force. We couldn't get any help, you know, from the government. But what was interesting was the way in which we figured out we're gonna have to take care of our own. And so the acting was almost second. The AIDS epidemic was going on, but we still hit the bars every night. I realized you would go to these bars and you would see producers, you would see fellow actors, but during the day, it was very wink wink. My big journey into my queerdom was my sobriety. And I had both a gay manager and a gay agent. And they would tell me, butch up, I gotta butch it up. I wore cowboy boots back then. <laughs> and I had this enormous mustache. And I look back on those pictures, and I'm like, honey, you were not pulling it off. And so when I decided, okay, look, this is a marketable package here. This is what you're gonna get. That was a big lesson I learned was that I can be a little effeminate. I've worked solid since then, solid. As you get older, you're not as self-conscious. When, when you're young, you worry so much about what people think about you. I would like for the young generation to get involved. And what I tell people, is this is such a secret it's a, it's a source of my shame i never registered to vote till i was 44 years old i'm realizing that the change comes from within and your vote counts and if you're young and you're gay the lbgtq community you have to vote even if you just get involved on that on that level. The best thing that I think that came of the Stonewall generation was that we realized, look, they're coming in and beating us up in this bar in New York and now we're on our own and we gotta take care of our own. I think we grew up with so much prejudice and, and so much fear. I think that's what Stonewall was about, was that look, all we're trying to do is get together in this little bar, you know, just all of us, and you bring the police in? and drag us out? Okay, enough, enough. And we've become a force to be, to be reckoned with. And that all happened within our generation. I mean, who would have thought? Who would have ever thought?